polymer is a large molecule formed from covalently bonding repeat units of monomers in a long chain. A biomaterial is a natural or synthetic material used to replace part of a living system or to function in intimate contact with living tissue. Polymers are all around us in everyday life, from cameras to clothing and much more. And their uses as biomaterials are just as numerous, ranging from pacemakers to prosthetic limbs. The possible applications of a polymer depend on its structure, as this affects its properties, both physical and chemical. There are two different types of polymers, step growth polymers and chain growth polymers. Chain growth polymers, like polyethene shown earlier, can be prepared three ways. Free radical polymerization, cationic polymerization and anionic polymerization. All three methods have three common features, initiation, propagation and termination. Free radical polymerization requires an initiator with an unpaired electron to open the alkene double bond homolytically. Peroxides are an ideal initiator as they are stable at room temperature but break down rapidly at the reaction temperature. More monomer units add one by one during propagation. There are two mechanisms of termination. Chain combination, where two radicals on different chains react to form a bond. And disproportionation, where one chain is reduced to alkane the other oxidised to alkene. Cationic polymerization uses an electrophile to remove both electrons from a double bond, producing a positively charged carbon. Alkenes continue to add to the chain during propagation. Termination occurs either by the loss of a proton or by the addition of a nucleophile. In anionic polymerization, a nucleophile adds to the double bond. This can only occur if a strong electron withdrawing group is attached to the double bond. Propagation then occurs in the same way as before. For this type of reaction, the chain does not terminate, it just stops growing when the monomer has all been consumed. Step growth polymers are made from a series of simple condensation reactions. For a polymer to be usable as a biomaterial, it has to undergo thorough testing. Firstly, in vitro testing to ensure biocompatibility of the material in conditions of intended use. Then, animal models and in vivo testing to fully determine biocompatibility of a device or material in real conditions. Risks associated with bad biocompatibility are a combination of exposure, effects on recipient, and possible complications. To ensure biocompatibility is good, the polymer must fit these criteria when in the body. These criteria are checked for during in vivo testing, alongside checks for irritation, biodegradation, and many more possible problems. Once testing is complete and the polymer found safe, it can be used in the body. I'm now going to look in more detail at the sorts of polymers used for some of the biomaterial applications shown earlier. Polyethene has two different forms, high density and low density. High density polyethene is made of long straight chain polymers which align and pack close together making a dense strong material used to make the cup in artificial hips. In low density polyethylene, chains can't pack as closely as it is highly branched, meaning its properties vary greatly from high density polyethylene. It's much more flexible and often used in rubbish bags. High density polyethylene is a strong material with strong bonds, meaning the hip it is used for is used as a long term implant and is non biodegradable. <laughs> Low-density polyethene is also a non-biodegradable plastic as it has strong bonds like HDPE. However, sometimes polymers are required to be biodegradable as this is better for the environment and in the case of biomaterials means they do not need to be removed from the body after implantation. These biodegradable implants were designed to overcome some of the problems of more permanent metal-based implants by acting as a temporary support during tissue recovery and then dissolving completely. One application of a biodegradable polymer is dissolvable stitches. They are made from polylactic acid, polyglycolic acid or polydioxanone. These stitches are dissolved by proteolytic enzymes or hydrolysis reactions within the body and usually take between 10 days and 4 months to be fully dissolved. 
Non-dissolvable non stitches are also made from polymers, but those which won't degrade, namely proline, a stereoisomer of polypropene. Another use for polylactic acid is screws for holding fractured bones together whilst they heal. The PLA screw gradually breaks down, transferring the support role to the bone as it heals. A new screw has now been developed containing polylactic acid and hydroxyapatate, which solve the problem of holes left by PLA screws. This new type of screw is not the only new development in polymer biomaterials in recent years. Polyether ketone ketone is a step growth thermoplastic polymer which has high strength and toughness and high heat resistance. It is synthesized from diphenyl ether and terephthaloyl chloride. The polymer's branded form, Oxpec IG, has been used to make bone implants, including the skull implant, and has these general features, as well as having passed a 52-week biocompatibility test. The implant is made by taking a CT or MRI scan of the patient's skull and then printing out a matching 3D object layer by layer. It's so precise that even tiny surface details can be printed to encourage the growth of cells and allow bone to attach more easily. These two recent developments in polymer biomaterials are not alone. There have been many advances in this area recently, including... So, all in all, polymers are pretty amazing molecules. Without them, most of the things we take for granted in everyday modern life wouldn't exist. We certainly wouldn't have such advanced medical treatments without polymers. And with the continued research and development of the biomaterial applications of polymers, who knows what uses they could have in the future?